Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. And we're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. Everybody. It is Saturday, September 21st, 2024, and this is episode, is it 57? It is 57. 57. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's Saturday morning, and we're just trying to pull ourselves together, <laughs> show you what we've been up to. My hair is sort of dry. Oh, speaking of hair, we're both getting our hair cut today. Cannot wait. I haven't had my hair cut in like six months. Okay. I'm going to be like up here. Yeah. We're going to lighten and brighten people. Our, the, we go to the same woman to cut our hair we've done for years, and she's... She works part time now, so sometimes it's hard to get an appointment. So I think my last appointment was beginning of July, and you had to, and you had to skip your and you had to skip yours in July. But it's just so funny because they're hard to get appointments, but yet we're often like back to back. Like I'm twelve thirty, and then you're one thirty or something yeah. like that. I'm even wondering if Rachel, who schedules, does that on purpose, and she's waiting for us to say something. Oh. <laughs> She's laughing behind the scenes. <laughs> Maybe. So we get up this morning. We're like, if we're going to film, we're going to do it now. So let's just go. Yes. All right. How you right. been, Anna? Good. I, 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 I haven't, have we even seen each other since the last time we filmed? I'm not sure we have. Yeah. Wow. That's how school weeks can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, share that uh, my husband and our parents went up to hear an outdoor concert in Chrissy Field, which is an area right on the bay, and you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. They, it was uh, really, really interesting. There was a pianist grand piano on a platform in the middle of a grassy field his name is um hunter noack i think mm, let me double check that yes hunter noack this is the flyer it's called in a landscape and he travels around the country so he may come to your area and what you do is you check in and you get headphones and then you can sit and have your picnic or you can walk around like the beach is right there so we kind of took turns walking around okay was, so he was down on chrissy field versus being up on the presidio so he was down, near down the, on the path okay the, so this is not our event in fact i'll show we should insert a picture carolyn because it was so foggy which okay. was really interesting to hear this classical music in your ear and then literally watching the fog just go, yeah go across so we couldn't see the bridge for most of the time it was a really, really interesting experience. Susan, you, our sister, uh, turned me on to this. Did the four of you stay together, or did you find you were sort of wandering, or did you have a base camp? We set up our chairs, and I had brought a picnic, so we sort of set up, got settled. Mom really wanted to be closer to him for a while, so she brought a stool instead of a <laughs> camping chair, and so she was kind of walking around with the stool. I could so She also, at one point, I looked over, and she's like taking her headphones and giving them to someone who was walking by who hadn't gotten a ticket, just to say, like, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> she's really, really friendly, and... So I, I would say we took turns wandering. Mm, okay, but you had a base camp. It was yes, yeah. quite an experience. Highly recommend it. Not super expensive. Really chill. Like we're like, are we going to need to leave our license or something to get get the headphones? <laughs> like no, there you like, go. Grab some and enjoy yourself, and then you just like chuck them back at the end. It yeah. was great, fun. So that was a highlight of the last couple weeks for me. Good. What about you? Well, I got in. Okay, I did not. St craft 14 days but i crafted 13 days so that felt good, good. i got a little bit back in the rhythm I'll, I'll show you crafting slightly different things but crafting that felt great my back to school night was on thursday which always feels good it's always a fun event but it's just a long day and you kind of get amped up for it and i always feel like once back to school night is done 
you're in the groove. You By this time, you really know your kids. You've got your classroom going through back to school night. And now it's just like, let's get going. Right. So that's good. Similar okay. to us. We've had our back to school night. We've gone surfing. We've gone hiking. We've spent the night in the gym. This is sixth grade. we are going. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Anna's been doing some experimenting. Well, uh, last time I was holding up Aztec Red that had, I had spritzed it to iron it and there were water splotches and a red spot had been left on my ironing board cover. So I thought, well, I'm going to try color catchers. So I soaked the fabric in water, right? You just yeah. put it in like a basin of water. And I changed the water six to 10 times. So the color catcher could look like that and then look like that and then look like that. So it's sort of blushy and then finally pretty much okay. clear. And then at that point I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. So this is a product called Color Catcher and it's what is its idea is that as the water, okay, this is a good question. Like when you put that in the water, the water's going to turn red or pinky and then this, this absorbs it. Did the water then stay pretty clear? No, the water got pretty red, but that is the, these are meant for the laundry. And when the dye particles go into the water, this catches them. So there's less chance that they're going to go on other, other clothes. The got it. Now, so many commenters um, left comments about two products retain, which is something that I have used before. And that is meant to fix dyes into fabric. And then Synthropol. Mm. is used a lot in quilting and that is a detergent that also will what how do, how do they the suspended dye particles it catches those okay so the same idea that so, it, it's getting those particles so that they don't get on other things i even started looking up the ingredients of what's in a color catcher and what's in th centerpole and it's and then i started getting freaked out because <laughs> I do have this piece of me. It's like when I start reading about chemicals, like, oh my goodness. And I started to gross you out a little I bit. I didn't realize this. This has a little fragrance in it, which I'm also really sensitive to. So anyway, I've tried color catches. Let me show you. This is what the Aztec red looks like. Will you hold that? I'll get some uh -huh. fresh Aztec red. And these. So the white of my stitching, I think, still looks pretty white. Yep. Okay, so this you have put this through the process. Yes. But just like when I was experimenting with over dyed threads a year or so ago, you know what? I feel like the sparkle, it must be the last thing that happens in the dyed product. I'm not sure you can see a difference on camera. There's, it just looks a little dull to me after the process. Oh, yeah. You so know it must be like in some over dyed color that's coming out. I think it's not so much a little dull. I think it is a little lighter. lighter. It is lighter. Oh, there, can you see it on the camera? Oh yes, there you go. That's good. Yeah. So here's my conclusion. And by the way, this is what I want to do these on Aztec Red with Surfine Blanc. I think I'm a person that is mostly going to stitch with color fast supplies. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, if I use a highly over dyed fabric or a highly over dyed thread, I'm just going to avoid water. Mm -hmm. And just know that, that that I need to be thinking about that. I'm going to go ahead and do this project. Okay. And if I get any running, like I'm not going to spritz it when I iron it. I'm going to start fresh. If I get any running, because some people have said like your white thread can even start to get red from the fabric. I'm just going to, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Okay. So you are going to not finish this one. You're going to start again with a fresh piece of Aztec red. And right. She's on 56 count with this. Right. Okay. Great. Yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely just lighter, but it's probably it's that excess dye that's come out. Like that that dye hasn't fixed itself to the fabric, but you can still see it on the surface. And I think what I'm saying is that that final thing, whatever is happening in the dyeing process, that's getting taken out with retain or color catchers. I like that look. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, I mean, because that was great. It was great. And now, you know, like sometimes after I mess around, like I'm not, now I'm just certain. Well, it's that like, that's my choice. Right? It's like for now. you get your information and then you get to make your decision, right? right? And different people can decide whatever they want, but it's good to have that information. You know, it's interesting when you um, knit with anything that's been dyed with indigo, part of the process of knitting with it is actually your hands turn blue because there's a, some of that residue that has to come off and it's, it's fine. It's not like it's, it's just extra on it. And so it's, it's called like, I want to say cronking. That's not quite the right word. Crock. Maybe it's called crocking. And it's this idea that that's the last bit of the indigo 
that's coming off your yarn. Mm -hmm. So you'll be working. And sometimes, like, recently I was knitting with a green yarn that was based on, and my hands were turning blue. I'm like, what's going on? It was because there's still some indigo in that green mix. Cool. But I, but I, I mentioned that because I kind of like it because it's like, this is part of the process, that dye process. All right, Anna, I'm going to hold up my project bag, too. I love, I I love, love this, this project bag. This is a panel. It's a French general embroidery panel. I didn't embroider it. I just like the way the stamped red looked on it. And something about those bunnies. With I it. know. I think your mix of fabrics and your zipper is perfect. Well, thank perfect. you. Perfect. Okay, cool. Right, so cool experimentation. Should, yeah, we should move into our whips. Our, guess, all right. Do we want to um, toast anything? We, oh. Because we're filming early this morning, we got up and we're like, should we even do our episode now? So we're like, what? No. <laughs> I slept a little late. I'm like, let's just come over and let's get going. Um, anything we want to toast? Well, I think my thumbs up are going to be about... I'm starting to feel some things I like about fall yeah. happening. So should we just... Yeah, we've had some good fall weather to... Let's toast a crisp fall Wait, air. And is it the solstice today? Wait, or the... Today's the 21st. Is that what it's called in September? Is it called the solstice? The, um, I think this is a um, equinox, which is equal. Shall we toast the transition from summer to fall? Toasting transition. I'm having some lemon ginger tea this morning. I'm having some good old PG tips, black tea. Anna, before we go to whips, I'd like to talk about what I'm wearing. What are you wearing, Carolyn? Thank you. I'm wearing two things. The first thing I'm wearing is a Lizzie cardigan, and this is knit with a yarn that's no longer available. Uh, there's a company, Shibui Knits, who is wonderful, that has since gone out of business. This yarn is like paper and silk and cotton, some weird combination. It was kind of hard to knit with, but it just draped up beautifully. I've worn this sweater for years and years and years, and you'll know why I'm wearing it in a bit. I'm gonna take it off for a minute. I'll probably put it back on because it's a little chilly. One thing I'll be talking about later is the beautiful construction. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of blowing out of this sweater. It is a set in sleeve that you just knit from the top down and it fits beautifully. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I'm wearing is this is a top that Anna made that she has since passed on to me. So do you want to, do you remember anything about this top? This is made with white linen. It is lined, mm -hmm. it has a zipper up the back, mm -hmm. and it was one of those retro big three patterns, like a simplicity pattern or something like that, that is from the 50s or something. Yeah, I this, really they, like that look. Yeah. And I was experimenting with, the pattern didn't tell you how to line something, so I was experimenting with how to line something, and the size, it ended up to be way too big, so I had to sort of tailor it Okay, at the it's end. funny because it's, I was telling Anna, sometimes I love it, but it feels almost like a, just a tad small, like across the, my back, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I love this neckline. I think I think we both, but maybe me in particular, have very broad shoulders, and I think it's a good neckline for broad shoulders. Yeah. It has a really big dart right here, which I <laughs> loved. I like the look of that. It looks so old-fashioned to me. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're wearing it. And I'm, I think I'm opting out of the what are you wearing for a while. Yeah. We'll see if my spirit comes back with that. We're but. just, we're just going to, if we have something on interesting, we'll talk about it. If not. And oh. thanks for reminding me if I forget to ask you. That's fine. Okay. All right. I touched four things. How about you? Um, I touched three things. Okay. Well, why don't I do? Okay. First, we, I don't think we have any finishes. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. You've done a lot on this, Anna. Well, I almost didn't bring this because I don't. I think I worked for two days. No, but I think after. all of this down here is yeah, new. Yeah, the corner. So yeah. I should show you this. This is for a present for a friend, 1864, by Hands Across the Sea. And I am. I ordered this through Hobby House. It was a kit from them, and it's 40 count. The Cat's Whiskers by Tabby Cat with the Swa 103s. This is the one with my huge project <laughs> bag. My little spools are in here. <laughs> there are three colors. And after our last video, I did more in here. And I, I just love it when I turn the corner. So this is sort of the let me see, oh, Anna, bottom you're... right quadrant right here. You're working your way through the brick. Yeah, there's two spools of that. And I finished the checkerboard. I like starting like three motifs at the same time and doing a little bit here, a little bit there. Anyway, really enjoying this. A present for a friend. The um, what you can't see, you can see on the detail here, 
on her border, there's a tiny little blue dot. Yeah, it's hard to see. That's hard to see, but it really here. adds a lot. I think that's focusing. All right, the bottom, Anna says, a present for a friend. Are you going to stitch that? What are you going to do down there? I don't think so. I, I feel like very often the person's name on a sampler or a message on a sampler, I do it last because as I'm stitching all the motifs, I'm thinking like, do I want to put that? Mm -hmm. Do I want to change that? Do I want to do a modification for that? So that's where I am with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to put a present for a friend. Okay. Would you, are you going to put something there? Or get Because it's sort of a space. You have to just decide what it's going to be. Right. My original thought, because I used to... I spent many, many years being part of a community at a nursery school doing something about that. Mm, mm -hmm. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. You're really making good progress. Thanks. I hope you I hope you keep working on it because you still have all this stuff up here too. Yeah, I mean, I... You I, sort of started it more in the middle. Oh yeah, I guess you started in the middle of the house. Yeah. I can't stop looking at this in terms of quadrants. So mm -hmm. I'm not even finished the first quadrant. Mm -hmm. But I'm really enjoying it. De I definitely don't feel like, oh, I need to finish this or I'm in any sort of rush. Mm -hmm. And I'm re every time I take it out, there's something about the limited color palette, all the little motifs all over the place. It's just fun. Really fun. Do you think you like to get three motifs going because then you can go back and forth? Like you're like, I'm kind of in the mood for this motif. Definitely. Yeah. I think this is why I'm not a monogamous stitcher. I think this mm -hmm. is why I love a sampler because you can have a bunch of things going at the same time oh and i've heard other people say like i'm tired i'm gonna do some fill in mm -hmm. or i better get some of that border done work on the border for a little bit and then go in and do a bird or mm -hmm. i like that feel yeah that's neat okay all right so my first whip i need to be honest with everybody mm -hmm. i'm a little bit in a cross stitch slump I, I did not know that, Carolyn. Yeah. I'd heard other people say that, and I had never experienced it before, but I'm the last two weeks I've experienced it. My analytical brain always has to like think why. I think I had such... I had three big finishes last video. I had my sweater, I had my Yaya sampler, and I had my Artsy Housewife weeds and wildflowers. And I think sometimes after big finishes, they kind of come in clumps for me. I don't quite know what to do next, mm. particularly when I've really enjoyed them. I'm like, okay, what do I want to do next? And I thought I would be starting Mary Finley. I haven't touched it, so maybe that's the next year's sample. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to like think about another sample and I have an idea. But I have worked on one cross stitch piece, and it's been my autumn salt boxes. These I think are a bit comfort stitched for me when I'm not sure. Yeah, you really like. Them, I so. really like these, and I'm working on. For me, the first one, but it's called number two, that one right there. I've just made a little bit of progress. I'm just working my way. I love sometimes when you're in the mood, do a little detail, do a little fill in, do a little of the white border. And I'm stitching this on <laughs> something or other, 36 count, we don't have our notes. And using the called for combination of over dies and DMC. Here are the and it was fun. One of the the roof, for example, I forget what the color was called for, but I could tell it was some kind of like dark gray black. So I just went to the our Roxy Floss Co. and just pulled something from our stash yeah, that I thought was great. Good. So I really I love again having that stash of Roxy Floss Co. Good, good, good. Yeah. Carolyn referenced Mary Finley mm -hmm. and looked over because that was my next mm -hmm. whip that mm -hmm. I worked on. And this was uh, through Kitten Stitcher. Mary Finley from the Scarlet House. And I ordered the called for, through, called for MPIs and the Mason Linen Button Box 36 count mm -hmm. through Kitten Stitcher. And this is really clever. Anna has taken the sticker from the linen and just put it on a little index card. So she has all her info about that. Very clever, Anna. Why, oh, thank you. Oh, this is looking good. Yeah. This is looking good. So I, in September, I, this is what I started with in September for Sampler September. And I've been alternating a little Mary Finley, a little, one of my previously started samplers, a little Mary Finley. So this time I brought the border down. I finished this honeysuckle. I finished these letters. And which am I holding that? Mm -hmm. Bringing some of the combination of colors from the bottom up to the top. So I just want a little more variation. So 
So there's sort of an olivey green and a blue green, and sort of a brick red and sort of a purpley red that are all used in the bottom. Now, we were discussing the trees, which are coming next, yeah. and I was th thinking I want a little more variation, and yeah. I was thinking maybe even like putting in some this gold was great. or something, but then the more I looked at the way those trees are constructed, I, th I think I want to keep them one color. Mm -hmm. And you had suggested maybe we look at some variation of the MPIs, the avocado right. range, and then I thought, oh, I think having a nature sing. It does. Oh, is it, is it, it the is avocado? avocado. Okay. And I had played with those greens. So oh, I have. What's, it, what's our call for one in, for three, Mary Finley? 335, is it? Let me see. Mm. Those, are, those look more goldy. What's right here? Oh, yes, that's what it is. It, here it is. Okay, so this is the call that. for. And I have four of the range <gasps> sitting in. Oh, and I'm going to do that. Interesting. So we're going to go up to Needle in a Haystack sometime soon, too. And I'm going to look at the other colors in the range. So yeah. I like this idea of maybe using three or four shades in the avocado green for that line yeah. of trees. Yeah. And in fact, I think this is why I'm, I didn't start Mary Finley. I start looking at it. I love the design. I love the verticality of it. I love that it's sort of bands. I love that there's no verse. It looks a little flat to me. Too, like... As you're saying, too much of the same color, too much of the same color, even like too much of the same color. So I think I'm going to do like I did on Emmeline Hotchkiss and would do this primarily in the screen, but have a few of those be in different greens just to add some depth of color. Yeah, if you want, you mean like a few of the circles? They mm -hmm. run into each other. So one of them is part of the others next to them, one stitch. Okay. So... Um, You'll have to think about that. Uh -huh. So if the little tip, if you make that a different color than yeah. the one below and the one above it is going to be missing its tip in its color. Interesting. So you really? can see it easier on the graph. Yeah, because from here, okay, well. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I thought about. Figure that out so I can do it too. Because I do like how you brought some different colors already up into the top. I'm liking that too. This is my Misty of Chincoteague bag from mm -hmm. yeah. Catherine of Stitching a Costume. It looks great. You're making really good progress on this. Thanks. I, I, a couple of the things I'm working with have bands mm -hmm. and I'm finding that it's a nice stopping. Sp I, I'm usually in a couple of the bands at the same time. Again, that's the same idea of moving around a bit, mm -hmm. but it feels really good to finish a band. Right. So I don't know. I might skip the tree band until we go up to look at floss. So your flaw, I really, it's interesting. You're, you can see there's a lot more details. These look like honeysuckles, like when you look at them now that they're stitched. Yeah, those little extra colors and little tips. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about, last video we talked about these lines that are in my head. Oh, uh-huh. I can't remember how we got them to show. There we go. We had quite, like, a lot of ideas. Yeah. One of which I hadn't, two of which I hadn't heard before. One was using vinegar. I know, that was new to me too. Or any acid, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do I have that right, vinegar? Yeah, I think so. So I would, I might experiment with that, with that down here and see what happens. One person even said, put vinegar on your finger and just put it on that mm -hmm. crease. So I thought that was... Then good old best press, which mm -hmm. I think you had suggested to me. And then there was another thing that I think, and most of these are coming from the quilting world, something called Flatter, F-L-A-T-T-E-R. Oh, it's made mm -hmm. by the Soak Company. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, why not use a quilt clapper, which I've never used, which is, I guess, that piece of wood that you put on while the, mm -hmm. the fabric is hot. Mm -hmm. So I might, tr I don't have a quilt clapper, do you? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Try the vinegar first, because I, that, am, but that, I felt like that also came from multiple people. My intuition is telling me that this is more than a fold line. I think... You think it's a dye some, line? I think there's some color loss. I think it's... Somebody said, oh, linen is on a bolt before it's cut. But this is this matches the way it was folded in my envelope that I got it in. Which, by the way, Mason Linen has these beautiful wax envelopes. So I'm going to proceed. Again, it's been fun to hear ideas and to think yeah. about this because... Like if you rub your finger over there, you can feel a ridge on this oh. one. Feel, go just right across there. 
Oh, yes, I can. So, oh, yeah. oh good. Uh, try, try the vinegar. Try the vinegar because the, the vinegar can't hurt this. And you've got plenty down here plenty. that you can work on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just going to have to frame that really close in. Right. And again, may, I don't know if it once it gets stretched, if it would be less obvious. I think it will be. Yeah. So, Mary Finley. So speaking of framing, just that, that little thing, my husband's been doing a lot. He's really into genealogy, his family genealogy, and he had, there were some classic old photos from his family, and he's been working. He got a photo expert to digitize them and sort of clear, make them crisper, and then he got them printed. They're beautiful. Hmm. So he says, I'm going to go frame these. So he went, he found a local framer, and in fact, when he goes to pick them up, I'm going to say, it's just a guy that works, at, see if he does needlework. But my husband, wait, wait, he works out of his house. Is that what? No, he's up on El Camino. It's like not far from here, near, um, I think near Happy Donuts. No, Ernie's Liquor Store. Um, I know. It's funny how you know where things are in your town. But John goes, framing's really expensive. I'm like, yeah, dude, it really is. Yeah. Welcome it's to really, our world. I know. I think, it, I think they're going to, yeah, it was fairly expensive. But I'm like, it was so, he's worked so hard on these photos. Like, they definitely are, they are definitely worthy of of that but i'm curious i had never heard of this framer he found them just he has high reviews so i'm like when you pick him up ask if he does needlework okay um next let's see which one i want to do next i'm going to do and i have the next are two new starts um the first one i'm going to talk about is related to my lizzie sweater my lizzie cardigan right here we have a family wedding that's on a farm and it's in october so all the sisters have been thinking about what are we going to wear so i have a dress getting haircut. oh yeah we're getting our haircut um, I have a dress that I wore to a previous um, nephew's wedding that I'm just, I'm going to re rewear. So here's the fabric of the dress. It's really nice. I love the brightness of it. And it's just a simple dress with a little bit of interest, interest at the hem. It's short sleeve. So I'm like, okay, got to knit something. <laughs> so our weddings went in about three or four weeks. And last weekend, I a, hadn't thought about that. So yeah, you got to. It's so classic. It's so classic. Mm -hmm. The um, there is a fantastic knitting store in Pacific Grove, California, which is about an hour and a half from us. But it's in this beautiful. It's connected to Monterey. This beautiful spot. So I asked my husband, I'm like, "Hey, you want to go down Pacific Grove in our little van and spend the day?" So we had this fantastic day in Pacific Grove. If I have any pictures, I'll put them in here. But then I went to the knitting store and I found the perfect yarn. This is silk mohair. And it's in like the perfect green it really accent. Is. It's like perfect. I went in the store and I'm like, I have whatever I can find. I can figure out something to knit. This yarn, um, unfortunately, the price tag is blocking it, but it's Knitting for Olive. That's the company. And she had quite a few things. And I know Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch has knit with um, Knitting for Olive yarns. And this is her soft silk mohair. And the colorway is clover green. Again, it's really fine. I think that's the yarn. I mean, the different kind of yarn. The same brand that I knit my blanket for. Maybe. For C and yeah, she, I, so I had, this is a new to me brand for that. What I love about silk mohair is you can op knit it nice and open and the mohair fills it in. So it does, it can keep you warm without looking heavy. Yeah. So I'm knitting this sweater again, mm. the cardigan. And it's from Coco Knits. She has this sweater workshop book. And it's all about knitting top-down sweaters with set-in sleeves. And here is, you start at the, the back neck. So you can just get a feel of the fabric that it's going to be on my back neck. Back Would neck. you consider making it a little shorter? Absolutely. Since this is a dress? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. So I love that it's top-down. Uh, so what I'm thinking about is I'm going to definitely get to like here. I'm going to do probably, I might even go full-length sleeves. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to start trying it on. And I'm thinking maybe about here. So Great. it's going to feel crop. This dress has just a nice clean line. So I don't want it to, the sweater to go down to my hips. It's going to be yeah. more like. I think the natural waist, that smallest part is the. And so I'm going to stop there. So it's probably like this. Well, this overlaps. So it will still be open. I'll be curious if it gets cold. I might be like. Ugh. Well, if it's that cold, we're going to. We'll have jackets coats. on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so super excited about this. The one thing I realized, though, what I wanted to show you these, how beautiful this set and sleeve in, it's very technical knitting, which totally fine for me, but it's slow going, and especially with mohair. So I have this piece and my next piece, I'm, I'm about to start doing like the shoulder shaping. So I need to 
have some good quiet time, hopefully this weekend, to really sit down and give it my full um, attention to get yeah, that. Get that hard. It's kind of the done. thing is once you get this top fitting part done, then it's just like whoosh, knitting down. Good. Then you can have a big knitting day tomorrow. Yeah, but it's worth it because her things, I think, are, like this stays on your shoulder so well, and it has this beautiful. It's called like a. Um, I think she calls it English shoulder seam. It's something in the back. It's just so well done. I remember when you learned that because you were talking about it it's, a lot. It's incredible. And for anybody that's knit sweaters, often like a set in sleeve, traditionally you knit the bodies and then you knit your sleeve with this sleeve cap that goes like this. It's like a sewing sleeve cap. And then stitching that into your knitwear, like nobody likes to do it. It's hard to get your sizing right. So people have tried to design different ways to do set in sleeves top down. And there are a couple of designers. Elizabeth Doherty has done a really beautiful job. And then the Coco Knits has done a beautiful job. So now I haven't showed this to Anna, but we were, we've been talking about, again, it's just on a farm. It's an outdoor wedding. And then the reception's like in a tent. So the sisters are like, should we just wear sneakers? So I ordered a pair of green sneakers that just came, but I don't think they're the right green. Oh, I, shoot. I want them I to be the- I didn't realize they had already arrived. I want, they just came yesterday. I want them to be the right green. So let's see. As soon as I pulled them out of the box, I'm like, okay. So here's the green of the sneaker and the green of the dress. This is more blue. It is, but I think, I just, I think Stacey London would tell you that everything doesn't have to match exactly. Okay. <laughs> have to wear what not to wear. I mean, watch what not to wear. Um, I think it's, they're going to be far enough away that it's, that it's going to be fine. Okay. But I want you to try it on. And just to see. I think it's okay. Yeah. I really do. I see what you mean. It's yeah. not the same green. I have a great, I have a perfect pair of like black sandals that would totally work. But I love the idea of wearing sneakers and I'm not even a sneaker person. I am a sneaker person. Okay, what do you so think I about the, what do you think right? about the style of the sneaker? Well, I own that. those sneakers in another color. Oh, so. you do? Yes. Okay. So I okay. love them. So I think I'm going to keep them even if they don't work because I've never had colored sneakers before. And I'm... You can wear them that weekend even in other times. Right. Right. But I think they will. I, 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 I see what you mean. It's not like mm -hmm. perfect. I yeah. actually have a similar situation with the shoes I'm going to wear with my dress. Yeah. Where oh, like, okay. Are you are you going to wear sneakers or are you wearing those booty, the velvet booty? I'm going to wear the velvet booties and then change to sneakers. Okay. I think because I have some good, I have some shoes that would look good with this. I think maybe for the wedding, I'll wear my, my black shoes and then maybe go to the sneakers. If it's pouring rain or something, I might change my mind. Yeah. We'll see. So, so I got to get on this knitting. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's going to be fine. Once I get over my shoulder, especially if it's going to be cropped, I might be finishing it on the plane. Our sister Joan, it's her daughter getting married. She had some grand idea too of doing a sweater. Was she working on it this summer? Did she she was working on different colors because she was first thinking of something a little bit lavender like, but when it started to knit up, it was like, oh, mm. it wasn't working. So okay. she was in color choice, choice mode. Okay. I wonder where she is on that. Does anybody else have these grand ideas of like, oh, I'm just going to knit that for the wedding or... Oh, for sure. Okay. All crafters are like that, right? Okay. Don't we all share that? I think so. Yeah. So hopefully by the next video, I'll almost be done with this. It'll look pretty with this too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. It's really, it's very pretty yarn. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay. okay. What's next for you? This is my Betsy Fisk sampler that I bought at the attic. When I went to the attic, you know, there's so many beautiful things there, but I, I, so I came up with some categories of things, one of which was just pick something you've never seen before. So this is an older, from the 80s sampler. And then Carolyn of the attic, help me pick some philosophy. Oh, cause you're on 56 count for this, right? Will you dig out the blue for me? Yeah, the, there we go. the turquoise, this one? Yeah. So here, yeah, we're on 56 count, Cedar River Linen. What's the name of it? Do you remember? Is this maple it. bar? Is it Tefra? No, maybe it is maple bar. Shoot. Anyway, this is what happens when we don't have our notes. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this. This looks so good. And you know how we're always saying, it's so hard to, to you know, oh, get the scale. Gosh. But then I thought maybe the best way to get the scale is just to show like my 36 count with my 56 yeah, let's count. push it. Let's bring it up closer. I'm going to move my T. 
I mean, after I'm on 56 and I go back to 36, I still love 36, but it feels kind of like big and hunky. It's so funny. <laughs> Brenda described in a recent video, she goes, I feel like I'm just stitching on burlap. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, think really? she, yeah. I think she was going from 56 to 40. Mm -hmm. Anna, that's, that is so beautiful and delicate. The, and the colors... It, the colors are just that fun. gold. That gold is what makes it. Because sometimes I think it's the darker red for me. But what I wanted to say, like the blue is so reads so much brighter on the fabric to me than it does on the spool. Let's see. Like I think the the light blue oh. and the light pink kind of glow on the fabric. Yeah. They also look that in the fabric. It looks a little bit more like a like a baby blue. And this I would have said looks more like a turquoise blue. Right. So uh, if I lived closer to a store, I might have rethought some of these colors. What would you, would you have like changed the, the blue? The blue or this, like this pink. I don't know, some of them, but I like it. And I just, it's just, I'm having so much fun with it. Yeah. I think especially with the Swasophene, which is so fine. And a, a, which pink? Oh, that's a pretty That's dusty. this one. Ah. And then there's that. That, that one is this is, one. Uh-huh. So this is in the pattern, light pink, medium pink, dark pink. Yeah. And there's some navy blue that's coming in. There's your pink palette. You're that. This is really spectacular. So you're, pulled up your pattern. So you have above the, the line, the you have your alphabet. Now, actually, I want, I've done, the alphabet is eyelets. I tried eyelets on 56 in the corner. I'm like, mm, I'm not sure I'm gonna enjoy that. But then I tried, see that Z looking uh -huh. thing? That is <laughs> yeah. Smyrna crosses. Oh yeah. But I want your opinion. Is it, I mean, I can also just use regular X's. Does the thickness of the Smyrna's, do you think it's worth it to the, do the alphabets in them? Or okay. should I just go for X's? I'd say what you what it would do is there's a, um, you know, of course, with the with your plain vision, you can't really see that's a Smyrna cross versus an X, but I there is a texture difference. So I do feel So we're getting some satin stitch coming in later. I would do the Smyrna crosses. I think okay. I think having that texture difference would look really nice for the alphabet. I was leaning towards that for the very same reason, but yeah. I just needed one more person mm -hmm. to say yes, it's worth the effort mm -hmm. for the texture. I did some Smyrna crosses for Yaya sampler and once you get going on them, they're really fun. I, I really enjoyed stitching them. Just on the 56. Oh, yes, of course. Um, That's right. It's going to be slow going, which I, I'm a pretty patient that way. So I think I'll be okay. All right. So That's you this. are really getting into the 56 count. I am. I think when we go up to needle in a haystack, I would like to also get some 46. Mm, mm hmm. And Brenda was just saying, she's like, try it. She says, as long as you have a good magnifier and good light. I think it does. Well, maybe I after think. I do more, I won't feel this way. It, it slows me down. I think it might even take me twice as long, mm -hmm. one and a half. But man, the effect is mm -hmm. worth it for me. Mm -hmm. But I can see how it wouldn't be worth it. Even if you can see. A lot of people say, like, it's just not for me. I just can't see it. Right. And, right, you have to be committed to be, like, under a magnifier probably working a little bit slower. You really, I really have to count my threads. I can go over three pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So we're on 36 count, like it's intuitive. Like I'm not necessarily counting every time. Yeah. Can't you almost just find the next space with your needle? Like mm -hmm. once you know the spacing. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Okay, this is what, what is your next thing? This is what I've been into. Like, I can't stop. Oh, okay. All right. So it, it was either the last video or the video before that where one of my shared supplies is I had bought sort of a palette. This this woman, I'm um, sorry, I don't remember what her name is. She lives in Texas now. She has, um, her company is Green Letter Day. And here's some of her yarn. This is the worsted weight. She has a really interesting business model that has been very successful for her. She started off designing, she's very into crochet and she has beautiful sense of color. And so she would publish patterns, um, crochet patterns. And then she started dabbling a little bit with, I think dyeing her own yarn and getting the right color range for her crochet patterns. And it has since expanded into this big yarn company. I don't know if she personally dyes them or if she picks the colors and then has a company dyed them for her. I don't know there because she's a huge palette. 
But the, how she sells her yarn is she puts it together into a pallet of yarn and you could buy it at different bases and she releases it periodically. So you can't always get like one pallet will typically, she'll put it on pre-order, everybody orders what they want and then like three months later you get it. So I did one of these pre-orders and you, I, I got 10 skeins of yarn. And then at the same time, you can pick from that palette individuals. So I got a palette of 10 and then this one, which is called Time Machine, I, it was in the palette. And so I picked two more. Hmm. Okay, that's a long way of saying it. <laughs> I have a photo of the whole palette. So I'm now been crocheting a blanket. I'll show it to you in a minute. And I'm down, oh. here's what I'm left in my palette. And I'm working, so I have four more left in my palette. Plus I'm gonna add one more of these around it. So I'm making a simple granny stripe, which is a striping crochet gosh, blanket. so pretty. So oh I have just been crocheting. I don't know if we can even see. So Anna, maybe you can hold that side. So we started here was my first skein, second, third, fourth, fifth, and now I'm up. This is that time machine. So I'm actually gonna do a double strike with the time machine and then finish on the other side. Wow. So. The colors are so pretty. I mean, they're pretty on the skein, even prettier. Don't, doesn't it feel, it, this has up. such a great heft to it. Really nice warmth without being itchy. The um, pattern I'm using, it's a really simple pattern, Attic 24. She does a lot of crochet patterns. They're just free. They're all, actually on her blog. And this is her granny stripe blanket. <laughs> Um, and she like changes color every two rows, but I'm, you know, of course you can do it any way you want. So this is the third time I've done a granny stripe. I just love how simple it is, but crocheting is so addicting. It's this new, it's like a different motion. It's very physical for me. Like you're kind of like, where's knitting? So you kind of just get into it. So every night, I think I started this about a week and a half ago and I've just been crocheting. Must be calming. And so that's, that's where I've been spending a lot of my time is I get home and I'm like, oh, what should I start in the cross stitch? What should I do? I'm gonna just crochet. <laughs> so, again, seeing those colors. And then the rest, we're gonna now go into some dusty, it's kind of hard to see the colors, some dusty purples to end the top. You know, it's funny. See, I keep thinking of Annie and Chris. I don't know though if they're, you have to be a purple person to like this. I think it's a little, I don't know, it's kind of like a different color palette. Well, you can just send them a picture. But, but. So that's been really fun. Great. But I love her. If you're at all interested in yarn, again, it's green letter day. So you're, you're putting down a big chunk when you get this because I got 12 skeins of yarn. Yeah. But the, it's so beautifully curated. And she has lots of sand, like her crochet. Anyway, she's beautiful. Go follow her on Instagram, her beautiful. Um, it's also a nice feed. Okay. All right. So I have touched one more thing that I'm alternating an older sampler, Mary. Wow, Anna. Anna. So I pulled out the um, Smith sampler for the Scarlet House. And my notes tell me that I received the pattern for my 60th birthday. <gasps> okay. And that I chose the fabric at Acorns and Thread. Actually, Janine, we met Janine at that trip. She helped me choose that. So that was in December of that year. December of that year. And we chose 36 Count Shrekis Tan. And That's she also right. helped me brighten the white That's right. because I really wanted the swan to pop. So I'm using Vicky Clayton silks plus the MPI 991 BB, the really bright white. And here's what it's looking like. How did you feel coming back to it? I had a very interesting thing happen. I was happy to see it. I like this sampler, but I am not going to finish this sampler. You know what I'm gonna do? Wow! I'm gonna stitch the top band. What? Okay. And stop. And then I'm gonna replace, I love the bunnies down below. I'm gonna replace the dogs with the bunnies. And then I'm gonna do one of the peacocks and make it a little small. And I might so, make uh, it into a project bag or I might hem stitch it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm just gonna finish that. So I'm gonna okay, stop. Are you gonna do the border? And mm -hmm. so it's going to be, it's going to look, well, it's, it's symmetrical. So th this side will look like this side and I'm going to stop it here. Or I might add a little bit underneath that. Yeah, because the natural, dress. you could sort of stop it right there. Or, right. or stop this one halfway. 
I think I will, right. I think I'm going to finish those triangles on the border. Uh -huh. And then if I end up, oh no, I guess I need to decide if I'm going to sew it into something or if I'm going to finish it on its own. Uh huh. So I don't, I, it's like, I don't, I don't really know why. I think sometimes our taste changes a little bit. And again, I have no dissatisfaction at all. I just am not feeling like, oh, I, I just feel like, oh, that's pretty. And I think you have to feel that other way a sampler, it's a lot of work. It is. Do you want to spend all that time? Anna, that's so interesting because you were so into it when you started. Do you think it's also because now you've seen other samplers, you've been working on other samplers, you come back to this and you're like, yeah, this is this is nice, but it's, I don't want to spend my time stitching it. That's my best guess as I was thinking about it. I think it's just two years of exposure mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. lots and lots and lots and lots of samplers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little bit... I, I'm still going to stitch on 36K, yeah. I think. Hold but up I'm your really... 56 again next to this because you can um, see the thickness and the... Right. Like, just look at the difference in the look. So I'm more interested in this. The finer look right now. Yeah. And I think it, rather than having this sit in a drawer and maybe I'll finish it someday, it will mm -hmm. feel better for me, especially because mm -hmm. I've been thinking about bands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stitch a band and then, mm -hmm. I don't know, even if it just sits around or mm -hmm. it gets draped in a dough bowl or something. Mm -hmm. so maybe I will I think it. I think having some pieces and hem stitching them and just having them as like a reference piece or just something, it doesn't have to be up front. Yeah, even like I, I going back to when we were talking about like 2025, the year of the book, and people were saying stitching out of the book. I can't get out of my brain this idea of just sort of having some small pieces on fabric and having it like a fabric book or pages maybe they're in a bowl and you can just kind of flip through the pages and look at look at them so let's do something book like of some, maybe, something. you and i could maybe do different things yeah and we could also finish our fruits of plenty <laughs> oh. all right and i think also Anna. it was the swan yeah that originally drew this to me and that's in that top band and there we go decision made I good think. nice until, until i changed my little mind little digit and I haven't thought about Fruits of Plenty in a long time until you just mentioned it. I was, I'm going to finish that this year. I, get, I know. I think I even said something on a video like, I'm just going to stitch 2024 now because I'm so sure I'm going to finish it. But now I'm thinking, oh, 2025 would be a great year to finish. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Did you, do you have any um, shared supplies? Um, I showed you my shared supplies. So, oh, the like yarn. New yarn and sneakers. I'm not sure that sneakers are shared supplies, but... It was purchased. True, and this really isn't shared supplies. So. <laughs> supply. Supplies. The only shared supply I have is I went to our library's book sale for the first time. Maybe the, I went there The 20. one that's back here? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. And there's a whole kids section. So I'm, like, I'm just going to go see what those kids' books are like. And they also had some toys. And it for a dollar fifty, there was a Ziploc bag with a few little squares of like memory pieces like two bunnies two oh, trees and everything uh -huh. with two really pretty wooden boxes that's a beautiful box there were there are two of them that's so a beautiful i have box. i have one for you if you want because we're putting a cross stitch small on those yes. suckers yes yes so i don't know if this is from something else can it's, i hold it for a second mm, please i just thought that box was so pretty it's made in made in holland I should, I, should in, I should input that to see if it's a toy company or something else. Maybe like some fancy tea came in it or something. I just don't know. I thought I, it was beautiful. I mean, it's it's high quality wood with dovetails and a beautiful fitting lid. So we have two of those. Wow, that is a find, Anna. Yeah. Nice. That is all. <laughs> I have the itch. I think I'm going to order some fall smalls. And we have some really mm -hmm. pretty fall smalls already. Mm -hmm. And when we go up to the store, let's each pick a fall small. Mm -hmm. And sounds get good. any threads that we need that we don't already That have. sounds good. Okay. That sounds good. Then we will show those to you. Okay. Oh, That's that was perfect to. timing. Because what just happened at Carolyn's house is on my thumbs up. I don't know if you can hear this in the background. We have a beautiful incredible oak tree in the front of our house. We're so lucky and it shades our house. It keeps our house cool. 
but this time of year, I think coming back, typically beginning of September, it starts, they, it's dropping acorns. And we live in the kind of house that's going to be, if you don't live on the West Coast, it's going to feel weird to you. But like, we don't really have an attic and our, I'm pointing up here, our ceiling is essentially our roof. So anything that falls on the roof, you hear like when the squirrels are running across your roof, but the acorns fall on the roof and it makes a pretty loud sound. It's, it's pretty surprising, but it's also part of the season. Right. And being in the landscape. And being in the landscape, the suburban landscape. So we kind of love that sound. So was that part of your thumbs up? So my thumbs up, again, is, has to do with our toast of this transition into fall. So you know I always have to get a white pumpkin. You love the pumpkins. I just It makes me so happy just sitting on the dining room table. You're going to need to stitch the piece with the white pumpkin. pumpkin. Yeah. Okay, I might. Okay. Um, we also have an oak tree and the acorns falling on the roof have been absolutely hilarious. Okay, can you hear so it too? Loud. Yeah, in our bedroom. Oh, so loud. yeah, 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 so yeah. Loud. Yeah, uh, and then I and then I just love that feeling of like a little extra throw blanket mm -hmm. as you're falling asleep and the air is coming in, or just I love a vest. I like the feeling of really cool air, but my core being mm -hmm. warm. And so the, we've had a couple of mornings where as I go to school, I'm like I'm putting on my vest. Mm -hmm. Nice. It, it is a nice feeling. Thumbs up for you, Carolyn. Do yeah. you want to do them? Okay. Yeah, of course I'll do them. There. I'm just gonna come off the top of my head. Thumbs up number one. Actually, I'm going to agree with you there about the adding a blanket. We sleep with, we kind of have a patio door to, for our bedroom and we sleep almost all year with the patio door open. And at some point you're like, oh, I need that blanket on top. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll give that a thumbs up. Thumbs up number two is, I've talked about this a lot, but our women's professional soccer team, Bay FC, Bay Football Club, they had a game last night and we, John and I have season tickets. We go and we tailgate. It's so fun. And they played... Okay, this is the first year of this team, and they played the number one team, and we played so well. We almost scored so many times. We were 0-0, zero, zero, and with five minutes left, the other team scored and won. Mm. And it was such a great game, and when that other team scored, the whole thousands and thousands of people just like, like it, everybody was so into the game. It was such a great vibe. But it, like in consolation, this is the best team in the league, and we played really well. So, go Bay. Okay, what's my third thumbs up? My third thumbs up is, I think, just getting my hair cut. <laughs> my hair, as it just gets, it just gets bushy. Yeah. I'm not okay. I'm, I'm not going to complain about my hair, but it just it feels really good to get a haircut. I. In the past, would have gotten my hair cut every five or six weeks, and I like that. Usually by like week five, I'm like, okay, I need a haircut. And now we're at the cycles have been more like eight to ten weeks. So I love our the person that cuts our hair. She's like family. But I think I might find somebody else to be like the in between cut or something. I know we've been debating this for for a year or so. Yeah, because our other local sister and mom have somebody they really like. So we'll see. We'll see. But thumbs up, I can't, I love getting my hair cut. It feels so good. Hey, be, I, we didn't forget, we forgot, did we do any plans? What are your plans? Oh, um, a fall small. Mm -hmm. I think that's as far as I've gotten. Okay. How about you? Okay. I have about three hours this afternoon before we go to the pizza party. I'm either gonna grade tests or I'm just gonna pick the sampler I'm going to start and it might be Mary Finley and it might be something different, but mm. I think I need to just mm. get, pick one and get some stitches in to get it started, to get that momentum going again. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that are my plans. Those are my plans. My other plan is I have not been posted on Instagram very much. Again, I think I get in the school year and it gets really busy. So plans, I'm going to post between now and our next, over the next 14 days, I'm going to post four times. Wow. I feel great. like that's a reasonable goal. Okay. Okay. We look forward to that, Carolyn. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. I think it's very common to have ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. on it's actually, I really like Instagram. sharing an Instagram because if I'm like lax, you'll post a few or you're a little doing something else. I'm not going to call you lax. Maybe I'll post a few. Oh, oh, our Instagram has been pretty light in general. And I, I'm, it's directly associated with the start of the school year. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. It's life. I feel like I've said that a few times this video. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. 
maybe that'll be the time. We always have to, like we're done, and then the next day I'm always texting Anna when I'm editing. Wait, what are we gonna title the video? Yeah, let's call it. That's, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> oh, beautiful. It truly is. It really is a thumbs up. It's a thing of beauty. I do like going to the grocery store and seeing all the little pumpkins and everything out. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It has, this has, I'm not going to pick it off, but it has no, this Please be careful with it. Yeah. That's why I chose it. This it's is beautiful, extra. like wispy extra. There it there is. There it is. <laughs> okay. All right, let's say goodbye. All right, until next time. Happy crafting. And stay curious. And Bye. we, again, <laughs> wish you 14 days of crafting. May you have 14 more days of crafting. All right, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.